Oh friends, after the Lord awakened me, I quickly learned that everything that's been prophesied in scripture is coming to pass. The Antichrist will control the world. This person will be the face of the new world order, the face of globalism. Yes, friends, this is what is behind globalism today. It's what's behind the UN and the EU, a desire to take control of the world under one authoritarian rule, and it's all described in detail in our Bibles. A one world religion too, as prophesied in scripture, working in tandem with the global power structure, that group of global elitists. Yes, friends, it's all in the Bible. Can you believe it? A world leader working with a religious power. It's all there in the holy scriptures. God breathed. He's warned us, friends. He has warned us. And what do we have today? A global elite whose tentacles spread throughout the world from Washington to Brussels, working with the religion of Islam in order to install their dictatorial power. Friends, they are using Islam to topple Europe right now. They used Islam on 9-11 to advance that agenda. And ISIS, much like Al-Qaeda, was made in the USA, an instrument of terror designed to divide and conquer the oil-rich Middle East. And that's what they're doing right now, friends. The wheels have been set in motion. Retired four-star general Wesley Clark said that just after 9-11, he was at the Pentagon. And one of the generals told him that they'd made the decision to go to war with Iraq, despite there being no evidence to link them to 9-11 or Al-Qaeda. Later, that general showed him a memo that explained how the US was going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and then Iran. It's happening now, friends, and judging by the rhetoric, Iran may be next on the list. But for many friends, the notion that these wars are wholly unjustified or that 9-11 was a manufactured event, is impossible to entertain. That immediately argued away as conspiracy theories, and this in turn is reinforced by the controlled mainstream media's narrative. The idea that criminal factions of the US government could have had a part to play in 9-11 is unthinkable to them. Many don't even believe there are factions within the US government, or any Western government for that matter, but this is naive to say the least. The facts are, there is a shadow government. Basically, secret intelligence agencies that have so much power that they act without the knowledge of Congress. The other reason people can't believe 9-11 was anything other than the official story is that they just can't accept that people could be so evil. But again, friends, this is naive. And when you begin to dig, it becomes quickly plausible when you see what some of these globalists get up to behind closed doors. And we only have to look no further than Bohemian Grove to cite just one example to see that very unsavoury things have gone on down in the redwood forests of San Francisco. Francisco, including a bizarre annual event called the Cremation of Care that sees a dummy, of all things, a dummy body carried on a small boat across a lake by a hooded Grim Reaper-like figure towards a giant stone owl. Friends, you couldn't make this stuff up. The programme cover for one year even had a picture of a baby being sacrificed in a fire. Along the lake edge, Christian crosses are lined up that burst into flame. Friends, this stuff is pure evil, and the globalists have been entertaining themselves with this charade for years. But it shouldn't surprise us that the globalists are working with Islam. Both are antichrist, and so both work well together. The philosophy behind globalism is a communistic Marxist system that at its heart is anti-God and anti-Christ. It is atheistic, as was the Soviet Union. Globalism is hostile toward Christianity, just like Soviet Russia was openly hostile. Soviet Russia tore down churches and arrested clergymen, and this, friends, should be a warning to us all. 
The roots of this hatred and intolerance toward Christianity lie in the essence of communist ideology. Marx said that communism begins where atheism begins. And he also said, I wish to avenge myself against the one who rules above. And again, in a poem, he tragically wrote, Thus heaven I've forfeited, I know it full well. My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. And Lenin stated, we do not believe in God and said that any flirtation with a God is the most inexpressible foulness and a shameful infection. George Soros, one of the masterminds behind the push towards this modern day communist Marxist globalism, is on the record for saying that he does not believe that God exists. And this, my friends, is why evolution is being taught as fact rather than theory. It is another weapon being used in an attempt to supplant God, remove God out of society, uproot Judeo-Christian values and help pave the way for globalism. The Antichrist system. The Bible is detailed. It's like reading the daily news. The surveillance society springing up all around us, much of which has been installed because of this phantom war on terror, is leading to the mark of the beast as prophesied by the Apostle John. Revelation 13, 17. And the second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast, or the number of its name. Here is a call for wisdom. Let the one who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and that number is 666. Yet again, friends, the Bible has prophesied this. The cashless society is the beginning of the mark of the beast. Once cash has been eliminated, it will be economic tyranny for the people of the world. The banks controlled by the globalists will finally have the people enslaved and in the palm of their hands.